Hello once again. To start off proceedings, we have with us Kayla Isabel for our key opening keynote. Kayla is a CEO of Startup Canada, the national rallying community supporting and giving the voice to Canada's 3.5 million entrepreneurs. Kayla has dedicated a career to supporting entrepreneurs both in Canada and internationally. Kayla is an award-winning strategic communications consultant and change management facilitator and is passionate about leveraging the power of storytelling in the entrepreneurial community. An advocate for women in leaders, Kayla is also a host of the Thrive podcast for a focus on providing resources to women entrepreneurs across Canada. Kayla, Kayla is a board chair of the Innovators and Entrepreneurs Foundation, president of the International Association of Business Communicators, Ottawa chapter, and a former board member of the Canadian Public Relations Society. With a passion for mentorship, Kayla runs the IABC Members Connect Mentorship Program, uh, uh, is Carlton University ne uh, Network Mentor, sorry, and Ottawa Community Immigrant Services Organization Career Mentor. Kayla has also worked as a coach at the World Skills Employment Center for newcomers to Canada and as a volunteer with the Darkness into Light Suicide Prevention Initiative. Today, Kayla will be sharing her insights on entrepreneurship, the key to economic recovery. Welcome, Kayla. Over to you. Hi. Hi, everyone. And thank you so much, Vitaly, for, for inviting me. Thank you to the entire Startup Bridge um, organization. I think uh, the videos at the beginning of today's session just demonstrate how inspiring and encouraging um, both the Canadian ecosystem is, but also within the Indian space as well. So very, very excited to be here today and share a little bit about Startup Canada and what we're seeing within the Canadian ecosystem um, during what we all know to be an unprecedented time. Um, so I'm delighted to share a few pieces of information about what we're seeing within our community. Uh, so I'll quickly share my screen and uh, we'll, we'll get going on the presentation. So in terms of, uh, oh, choose the application or tab. Apologies, I think uh, I might be blocked on sharing my screen. I'm not sure if this is uh, visible at the moment. Are you able to see the, the presentation that's being shared? Yes. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you for that. Um, so we'll, we'll dive right in. So uh, as I was introduced, my name is Kayla Isabel and I am the CEO at Startup Canada. And Startup Canada is really the national rallying voice of the entrepreneurship community coast to coast to coast. So we represent the interests of both the local ecosystem, smaller subsets of entrepreneurs within both rural communities, larger ecosystems and urban centers. Um, but we really provide a framing and a space for all of them to connect at the national level um, and represent Canada on the global stage. So Startup Canada is really that convening body that brings together all of the different accelerators, incubators, other entrepreneur support organizations, and gives every entrepreneur a soft place to land right when they're starting out. Um, we know that uh, you know building a business is not an easy task. Um, and in Canada, there are so many different supports that can be activated. So Startup Canada's role in the ecosystem is really to be that initial point of entry to then support entrepreneurs depending on the industry that they're looking to get support on, um, you know, specific mentors they're looking to reach out to, um, and really just providing that one-stop shop so that they have um, an easy access point because entrepreneurship is, is hard enough to navigate. Um, in terms of our programming, I thought it would be helpful just to illustrate a few of our key key program areas because I think they are indicative of um, where we see the most movement and attention being paid in the Canadian space. We've been doing a lot of work um, around the sustainable development goals and supporting entrepreneurs who are looking to align to the SDGs. Um, so those are the International Sustainable Development Goals mandated by the, the United Nations. Um, and so we've seen a really interesting movement in the Canadian ecosystem to align both nonprofit and for-profit businesses to the sustainable development goals. So I'll speak to that uh, in, in uh, a little while, but I think that's a really interesting um, evolution that we're also seeing, particularly because of COVID, that businesses are building back better and building back with this mindset um, of both sustainability from a business perspective, but global sustainability around uh, you know, climate change, gender equality, et cetera. 
Um, we're also seeing that the requirements for support are more so than ever. Um, you know, during COVID, there were a number of government supports, a number of new initiatives from private sector partners and nonprofits. Um, but we still have a long way to go to make sure that we're, we're equipping entrepreneurs with the support they need. So I'll speak to that momentarily. Um, our focus areas in terms of programming are focused on women, going global, uh, and being a voice to government. So I'll speak to that briefly, but this gives you a sense of all of the, the great things that we do at, at Startup Canada. Um, in terms of our nation and, and building a really strong nation for entrepreneurs, I think Canada is really leading in this space. Um, sometimes, you know, our southern uh, border partner gets a little bit more attention with Silicon Valley, etc. cetera. Um, but really as Canadians, um, we have an incredible opportunity to encourage and support both the entrepreneurs in our ecosystem, but representing them on the global stage. Um, what we're seeing within our census data, so in terms of Startup Canada's um, surveying, we do an annual survey that really gives us a finger on the pulse on what, what is happening in entrepreneurship um, on an annual, on annual level. We are seeing diversity in the ecosystem more than ever, um, and that with an expanding base of newcomers. So based on our, our data actually from 2020, so our new census will be coming out shortly, 15% um, of our Startup Canada membership came from uh, newcomers. So those that have um, either permanent residency in Canada, those that are citizens, um, or those that are, are um, planning on coming to, to Canada and build businesses here. So we're definitely seeing a big boom um, with newcomers who are entrepreneurial and who are looking to bring their businesses from their various countries into Canada or start new businesses in Canada. Uh, we're also seeing a big uh, boom in terms of solopreneurs and small business. Um, and this always has been the backbone of the Canadian economy. The wonderful large um, organizations that are built and these incredible unicorns that we see that create uh, you know, jobs at scale are an important subset. But what we see most often is these sole proprietors, these solopreneurs, as we call them, um, who are potentially building one or two jobs through their businesses, um, but creating livelihoods for themselves. So that's really where Startup Canada's network is, is strongest. As I mentioned, we're seeing an increase in for-profit social entrepreneurship um, and social entrepreneurship in general, and Canadian entrepreneurs either resonating or wanting to build businesses that align to the sustainable development goals. Um, and interestingly, this is not just in the nonprofit space and more predominantly in the for-profit space, uh, which is a really encouraging path that we're seeing moving forward. Um, in terms of barriers within the Canadian ecosystem, similarly to what we hear at the global level, um, Canadians are generally frustrated with the lack of financing options and the perception of, um, of uh, uh, with investors that they are potentially a little bit more risk averse compared to uh, you know, our American counterparts um, and that there are not financial options available for early stage startups. This is a piece of, of information we hear time and time again um, in terms of government funding. There are a number of hoops to jump through. Um, so this is a space that Startup Canada is working actively on in terms of advocacy and lobbying. Um, and really just eliminating these barriers to support in whatever way we can, either through training and support or in terms of advocacy and lobbying that we do to the federal, provincial and municipal governments. Uh, but all in all, Canadians want to scale up. They want to take their businesses. They have global aspirations. They want to be building globally competitive businesses. Uh, but what we need to do is make sure that that foundation is solid so that they can then um, develop more scalable potential through, through these more solid businesses. In terms of industries, uh, we see ICT being one of our most popular industries that we serve, professional, scientific, and technical services, arts, entertainment, and media, healthcare, trade, education, uh, and a number of different spaces. So what this really illustrates is um, Canada is a nation of entrepreneurs for every entrepreneur, not just the booming tech startups, not just those working in um, fintech, not just those in healthcare. There's space within the Canadian ecosystem for every entrepreneur that has aspirations across all of these different industries. Um, and what you'll see within the Canadian ecosystem is there is targeted support for many specific industries. So uh, further to the video earlier, um, you know, if you're a tech startup trying to, to start up in Canada, there are fantastic accelerators, fantastic incubators, 
great communities of support, um, but there's also additional support across all of these other, other areas. Um, in terms of business type, most are operating with for-profit businesses, um, mostly, uh, as I mentioned, with that shift to, to sustainability and social development, um, but business types um, still being more, more predominantly in the for-profit enterprise space. So this just gives you a bit of a highlight of what our nation of entrepreneurs looks like. Um, but I think based on, on what we're seeing at the moment, there is a huge opportunity that as we rebuild our economy at the moment, obviously COVID has had uh, an unprecedented impact on the entrepreneurship community, particularly these sole proprietors, these solopreneurs um, who either did not have staff, so they didn't qualify for some of the government supports. They were very early stage and didn't have established revenue, so they weren't um, qualifying for those supports in that space. Um, but as we try to rebuild the economy, this is a wonderful opportunity to assess what is working well, what we need to improve, um, and collaboratively really fill in those gaps. Um, and this both being in the Canadian ecosystem and internationally, that I think groups like Startup Bridge uh, now doing these digital types of programming, educating, connecting, uh, we do have a really great opportunity to use this time to build back um, a more sustainable base for our entrepreneurship community. Um, as I mentioned, about 98% of Canadian businesses have fewer than 500 employees. So that's a fairly compelling stat to showcase, um, you know, the types of, of support that we need to start up and scale. Um, in terms of, of other components as well, making sure that um, our government is investing in a highly skilled workforce. And I think this is a really a unique opportunity within the international ecosystem bringing skilled and trained entrepreneurs that have a global perspective, that have that global mindset, bringing them into the Canadian ecosystem um, and promoting export promotion. It's a huge focus of the Canadian government at the moment uh, in terms of exporting from the small and medium enterprise community and from entrepreneurs at large. Um, so to the extent that we really create this global fabric of entrepreneurs that are connected, that can leverage lessons learned in the international space, um, and that support a global entrepreneurship economy um, at the Canadian level, we're already starting to make that, that shift. Uh, but I think partnerships like this um, and really having these conversations across borders, it provides us with that foundation. So I think we have, we have a lot of great work to do, um, but it's encouraging to see these, these types of, of movements. Um, in terms of programming, as I mentioned, Startup Canada has a number of programs that are both open to Canadian entrepreneurs and those that are coming um, as newcomers as well. As I said, about 15% of our network um, identify as newcomers, um, so there's already an existing base within those spaces. I'll briefly run through this because I mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, but we have a women's entrepreneurship program that provides mentorship, support, um, funding information, learning about e-commerce, um, advocacy to government, so making sure we're championing um, what women entrepreneurs need during times like this, both from a financial perspective, in terms of flexibility, uh, in terms of the barriers that women and mothers are feeling during COVID with the additional responsibilities they're taking on. Um, so a very large component of Startup Canada's programming is focused on women entrepreneurs. Um, we also focus tremendously in the social impact space, both on the storytelling side and providing practical information from the government of Canada. Um, so if there are any entrepreneurs that are looking to come into the Canadian ecosystem, there are tremendous amounts of both funding opportunities through the investment readiness program from the government of Canada um, and in what we're seeing in new accelerators, new incubators that are popping up with a social impact mindset. Uh, so this is certainly a growing place that if this does align with your business or um, if you're interested in exploring that further within the Canadian space, this is, is something that I can see everyone doubling down from private sector um, and uh, public sector as well, working in the social impact space. Um, as I mentioned, we also have our Canadian Export Challenge and our, our ambitions to help Canadian entrepreneurs start and scale globally competitive businesses. And this year, we're taking much more of an international approach, connecting Canadian entrepreneurs with international representation and looking at it from an export perspective, 
but also creating this global fabric of a stronger entrepreneurship ecosystem at the international level. Uh, so you can definitely stay tuned for more information on that, but we always have some great speakers. Uh, we have Michelle Romanel from uh, our Dragon's Den, which is the Canadian uh, Shark Tank, so a great pitch competition that celebrates entrepreneurs within our ecosystem. Uh, but this global narrative is something that um, we all collectively can contribute to actively. Uh, it also includes a pitch competition, so it's a great moment to see what types of businesses Canadians are building. Um, and we have great representation from newcomers in this pitch competition as well. Um, so I believe uh, four out of our 12 finalists were newcomers uh, coming to Canada and bringing fantastic ideas. And this just shows you some, some, uh, some of these groups as well and a tremendous representation from newcomers in our, uh, uh, in our panels. Um, in terms of entrepreneur profile, these were just a handful of, of stats um, of those in Canada who have global aspirations, who want to build those, those globally competitive businesses. Many are early stage um, and many are around consumer goods, knowledge based industries and services or non industrial um, uh, industries here. So I just thought that could be a helpful stat just to see what types of global ambitions they have um, and the top export destinations as well being the US, UK, Australia, Germany and France. Um, so the, the last piece that I wanted to focus on during today's conversation was the power of community. Um, and I know in many of these keynote presentations and, and the speakers that you've been hearing from so far, um, there are programs and practical support and mentorship and these formalized entities within the Canadian ecosystem that can help you and bridge you uh, into, into the space. Um, one of Startup Canada's key strengths is that while we have Startup Canada headquarters in Ottawa uh, representing the national ecosystem, we also have chapters across Canada that provide a local perspective and potentially an industry specific perspective. So this being, you know, Startup Vancouver, Startup Halifax, Startup Peel region, uh, Startup um, groups that specialize with women, so the Canadians Women's Chamber of Commerce. Um, they are all connected through this startup community fabric um, that gives us both the perspectives from various local ecosystems, but from a much wider variety of entrepreneurs. Um, and this, is, I think, is a really key strength of the Canadian space is that while we provide ed education, inspiration, practical tools and resources, um, the power of the Canadian community is incredibly strong. Um, and you'll find that in, in talking to Canadian entrepreneurs, the interest in helping, the interest in mentoring and supporting, um, and that every door is the right door for so many entrepreneur support organizations that you'll connect with in Canada. Um, this is something that we're incredibly proud of and that at Startup Canada makes um, us a world leader in supporting the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Um, so in terms of you know coming to Canada, you both have national entities that can support you in doing so, but you also have these great um, landing points within these local in, in, uh, local communities that can help you in that space. So I have a very brief video, it's only about 60 seconds long, that talks a little bit more about our um, Startup Canada community. So grab, perhaps I can ask you to, to click on that video if you're able to. Hey, Kyla, can you uh, stop sharing your screen so that I can play that video? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. There you go. Thanks. It takes a community to support a startup, and it takes a nation working together to start up Canada. This is why Startup Canada is proud to support Canada's 3.5 million entrepreneurs through a network of 50 grassroots startup communities. The winner of the 2019 Startup Canada Community Award is Startup Peel Region, the go-to network for budding entrepreneurs. Startup Peel Region has helped launch more than 2,000 entrepreneurs with the help of 25 support partners, including LATAM Startups and the Brampton Entrepreneur Centre. This booming entrepreneurial community is led by entrepreneur Melanie Campbell, who is a champion of women-led companies and a voice to government advocating for Canada's entrepreneurs. Along with Startup Peel Region's team, Melanie Campbell actively promotes Canada on the global stage, champions local entrepreneurs to government leaders, and provides Peel Region's entrepreneurs with round-the-clock support. 
Startup Peel Region is a proven model for entrepreneur-driven ecosystem building and entrepreneurial success. Welcome back. We now have a panel discussion coming your way. Mr. Anupam Jalote, CEO of iCreate, will be moderating the conversation on the topic Building for Global Markets from Canada. And you'll be hearing from Shizlen Silvera, Global Partnerships at District 3, Roshan Mohan, Client Account Manager, City, City of Mississauga, and Sean Mui Tamas, Senior Advisor at Toronto Global. A blend of entrepreneur and entrepreneur, Anupam Pelote, CEO of iCreate, has successfully straddled both worlds, the corporate world as well as that of the innovative startups. An MBA from Purdue University, uh, Anupam has leadership experience in large telecom companies, startups, as well as institutions. His basic degrees are in economics and statistics from Lucknow University. He has promoted several startups of his own in the control systems and waste to energy space. An innovative thought leader, he has a granular understanding of the reality of innovation, startups, businesses, and government. He is passionate about putting India on the global map of developing low-cost, innovative technologies that help heal the earth and about encouraging young people on the path of structured thinking, innovating, and designing. Over to you, Anupam, to introduce the panelists and to take it from there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maitali. <clears throat> and a very, very warm welcome to the entire audience and my excellent panelists. Uh, we have a very interesting mix uh, in our panel today to talk about uh, how to build for global markets. Uh, we have Jisleen Silvera, uh, who heads the NYC uh, hub, and she's the global and strategic partnership uh, leader for District 3. Uh, we have uh, Roshan Mohan, who's the client account manager for the city of Mississauga. Uh, and we have uh, Sean Moy Thomas, who's the senior advisor uh, for Toronto Global. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to take uh, two minutes to kind of paint the context of this entire discussion, which we hope is going to uh, be very interactive as well as uh, cause a lot of uh, questions and thoughts to come up from the audience. Now, we've got two very vibrant startup ecosystems in Canada and India. India, because of the theory of large numbers at play here, is the third, third largest startup ecosystem in the world. And not only is it large, it also, I guess, punches uh, above its weight in, uh, in a lot of tech innovation-based startups. We've got uh, close to 50 unicorns now, uh, and a lot of uh, 
startups which are uh, edging towards becoming unicorns and we call them sunicorns here um <clears throat> despite the global perception that uh, india is the land of it we've got a very interesting mix of not just software based not just ai and big data based but also product based startups uh, uh, embedded systems iot uh, industry 4.0 agri tech health tech uh, electric vehicles um, the whole gamut and of course uh, ai based as well as application based and it product based now we also have a very large uh, startup ecosystem that uh, supports startups incubators accelerators investors angel funds <clears throat> what it does mean is that there is a lot of churn happening in india a lot of people are attracted to starting up and pretty soon some of them start seeing the world as their oyster there are quite a few landing pads uh, across the world that indian startups go to some head out to singapore the middle east some head out to the europe uh, european ones and a lot of them go to your neighborhood in the us this is a very very good moment to discuss how the canadian ecosystem can empower indian startups uh, and help them access the north american european global markets uh, so while there are two perspectives that a person can come to canada to start up the other bit is that a startup already established in india could come to canada for scaling up and now i'm going to uh, switch over to the panelists uh, and i'll request uh, uh, her work and then uh, lead us into uh, you know how being one of the earliest startup ecosystems in montreal uh, how did they help the entrepreneurs reach out to the world mm -hmm. yeah thank you very much thank you anupam for inviting me for this panel thank you shan kushan for being here with me uh, we are all this international global tribe and and, and I'm, i'm very keen on participating on this program Okay, so um, let me talk a little bit about District 3, a quick introduction, my role there, and how we are supporting entrepreneurs to go beyond, beyond the city. So District 3 has been in Montreal for six years now, and since the very beginning, when we, we didn't have uh, centers and innovation centers like us in, in the city, we always wanted to establish uh, that our entrepreneurs would think And, and act beyond Montreal, uh, knowing that city is not big enough, Canada, Canada is not big enough, and the world, it, it, it's, it's this huge market that we all need to explore. But of course, with the time, we have improved the way we have been doing this. Uh, we have been, since the very beginning, the most diverse center in Montreal. So uh, 65% plus of our community are, uh, have at least one founder that has immigrated or has immigration connections. Uh, then we also have a huge percentage of women in uh, co-founders in our startups. And the, the, the places where our entrepreneurs, they come, really varies from more than 30 different countries. So it's a very diverse community. And we are also talking about the, the profiles of the entrepreneurs. We have entrepreneurs that are very young, but we also have very seasoned professionals in different areas. So we we are diverse also in terms of sectors in, in industry that we, we support the development of solutions, but we have some extra resources uh, in, in areas like FinTech, Health Tech, Bio, and Social Transformation. So the These are the sectors that we really emphasize the programs that we have. So uh, having said that we are a very international, diverse community itself, we are also very well connected to the rest of Canada. So in, 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 in Quebec, we really have this coalition of different centers and we definitely part, uh, uh, do a lot of things together. And we do the same with other regions. I can give you an example now where we are, and I'm responsible for, for this program, we are bringing Canadian entrepreneurs for fundraising in the United States. And we are doing this in collaboration with um, 
scouting innovation centers in, in, in Montreal, in Quebec, and Canada. So we have startups that are represented not only Montreal, but Toronto, but Halifax, or even Vancouver. So all of them are part of our group. Because we really understand that by doing it together, we really have much more chances to expand to the rest of the world. So this mindset of being diverse, but also community oriented and, and, and working together is one of our major tools in our hearts to really help our entrepreneurs to, to go um, abroad, to think, act, and really success going abroad as early as possible. Um, uh, we also have a very one-on-one -on -one approach. I think every uh -huh. entrepreneur, they, they have different issues. So we also have specific programs. And as we go through the, the workshop, probably we will open up uh, how we will, we are able to shape our resources to one-on-one -on -one needs of each entrepreneur. And beyond that, we really go through a long path with them since exposing them to entrepreneurship, but talking about more major um, uh, opportunities by how we can help them to validate their solutions and also launch and grow in our family. So we really play a lot with our international partners in this sense. Anytime. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, th thanks a lot for that. Uh, I I wanted to ask if uh, a slightly um, tactical question because sometimes uh, startups have very basic needs. Um, you know, if there's a landing pad kind of a program that says, "All right, uh, you already know entrepreneurship. You've established uh, something in India, and now you want to reach out." You know the logistics of. Uh, incorporating there, maybe finding a team there, maybe finding co-promoters there. Do you have some sort of program that helps with that also? Yes, we do. So for more advanced we have a program that is called Launch and Grow. And Launch and Grow doesn't mean that you are still launching for the first time your solution, but you are launching on a, in a specific geography. So for example, if we have engine startups growing very tactical, if we have Indian startups that want to address the, the, the North American market. So they will join this program that it's a six to nine month program where they will revise the validation of, of the product market fit of, of their solution. And with North American advisors, not only Canadian, but also um, uh, uh, North American advisors, they will refine their go to market strategy and everything that is needed to take the solution from one geography to, to, to another. And we do this at an individual case, but we also do at a cohort base. For example, now we are exchanging with friends, a group of, of startups where our Canadian startups, they are going to friends in taking the country as the door to the rest of Europe. And they are receiving the proper support to analyze their solution to to revise the product market fit for that geography and most of the times also already starting their business development phase there and vice versa so they are coming and they are joining as well our community and from there they, they go so this is one case and very tactical where you join the program and and you will have any specific support to bring your, your solution to, to the North American market. And of course, as you do that, you will also um, expand your connections with peer startups that are doing similar job. You will also get connected to the industry partners that you might need to succeed in uh, industry collaboration and so on. And surrounding these that are all the legal aspects and, and the the infrastructure that you need to understand how you will hire, how you will incorporate, how you will uh, sell and, 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 and approach your taxes, schemes, so on. So you also need support on that. So we provide. Uh, wonderful. Um, this is uh, this sounds uh, exactly like what what startups would need. 
um, sounds very very encouraging thanks thanks a lot uh, justine uh, amazingly good stuff i'd like to switch to roshan now and uh, roshan's got tremendous experience in the investment banking and uh, uh, experience of supporting startups uh, and getting fdi into the economy and roshan i'd like to get your feel on uh, what kind of companies are really best cut out for setting up base in canada uh, to build build out for global markets and then what might be operational business uh, models that you see succeeding for indian companies there well thank you anipom for this opportunity to participate in the panel with uh, jisleen and sean uh, so canada as you know is a very diverse country we have diversity in the landmass you saw in that image that the map that uh, our colleague uh, kayla had produced it's it's an amazing country with so many different natural resources there is so much global relationships the government has negotiated in terms of free trade agreements with uh, countries around the world there's a diversity in the population in terms of uh, even the indian diaspora that lives here in canada and uh, operate from here uh, run global businesses and there is also diversity in the economic base so opportunities for a indian business coming here are multifold uh, it could be uh, i would like to group them in three different buckets uh, for the ease of understanding it the first one are companies that come here and want to use uh, canada as a cost effective base to sell initially into north american market and then sell into other parts of the world so how they do it they would uh, utilize the free trade agreement that canada has signed with uh, us and mexico you see, now it's called cusma and that gives you uh, if you are providing value addition easy access into selling into those countries easy mobility of your staff between those countries and you do that in a cost effective manner because when you look at the cost of new business in canada it's uh, the lowest tax rate in the g7 countries and in terms of corporate income tax you know we are among the lowest in among all the oecd countries so that itself will reduce your cost and then and uh, the numerous studies that are done looking at the quality of talent and the cost of talent and a software developer here if you would pay around 70000 the same talent if you were to acquire in a place like san francisco would be around 130000 dollars of course the currency difference between us and canadian dollar also plays in that role and top on that uh, healthcare because the public healthcare system here that, that further reduces the cost of you as an employer to run a business so you're running a cost effective operation and you see not uh, small as well as big companies that we pro infosys tc they all operating development centers and nearshoring centers out of canada to serve the north american markets and as you go along in your journey then you can tap into 13 other free trade agreements that canada has signed some notable ones are with europe so you, you, it's called ceta and with all the trans pacific countries so you that's one way you do it the second bucket would be uh, accessing the innovation ecosystem so just you was talking about incubators accelerators so we have uh, many of those across the country that uh, are catering to the supporting these companies they act as a soft landing site they provide mentoring they provide access to local resources and the access to the capital the, that you need to scale up the business whether it be uh, through angels venture capital or it's through even listing as you grow you can even list in a toronto stock exchange to raise capital there's a venture side which is meant for early stage companies and then uh, a much more established companies can go to the broader platform and you add on to that the incentives that are available here so there's a uh, r&d tax credits that the government uh, both federal and provincial combined uh, can reduce your cost substantially in terms of innovating and commercializing new technology and you can tap into the research institutions like if you are in ai for example there's uh, uh, institutions uh, in montreal in toronto in alberta so you can tap into all those institutions and tap into new ip that are being developed and tap into the research that's happening at, at colleges and the third bucket is the natural resources so people don't know that canada has uh, the world's largest listing of mining and exploration companies in our toronto stock exchange and we have oil and gas in alberta 
and we are ranked third in many, many uh, minerals and metals like potash, uranium, cobalt. I'm just naming a few, but there's a whole list of uh, um, metals and minerals. And then there is forestry as well. So it's uh, the we produce the second largest soft food lumber uh, in the world and we are ranked second in the world. So you take in all of those and you take in those incentives that are available. It could be for uh, if, from the tax credits, it could be actual grant programs. All of this together will reduce your cost substantially. And then on top of it, it's a stable political environment here. You know, you have the soundest banking system in the uh, world. Uh, and it's uh, in terms of corruption, it's ranked very low. And income disparity between the rich and the poor, it's very, very low. So you bring all those factors, you know, you try to run a business here with a supportive government and you see different levels of government, regional entities like uh, Toronto Global, who is actually focused on trying to bring in investment into the whole region, tap into resources in cities like which I represent, Mississauga and Toronto and Markham and Brampton, all of us working together in terms of providing the support that's necessary for businesses to scale up. Now you asked about what kind of operational agreements because of the diversity of our sectors, we have uh, technology is a core of our uh, industrial base. So we have software development, AI, cybersecurity, big data, quantum computing, fintech, you name it. Uh, it's happening here in a, in a mega scale. And there's companies focusing on industry four point of technologies, developing advanced manufacturing technologies. Uh, clean technology is another area that's uh, happening here. Uh, life sciences, there was a uh, someone speaking about biotech. So we are, in bit, especially the GTA, Montreal and Vancouver are like huge clusters of uh, these life sciences companies, whether it be in pharma, biotech, medical devices, um, uh, trying to develop and uh, commercialize. And there's funding programs and supports available here to support companies and uh, agribusiness and entertainment and media. So these are kind of the broader sectors. You know, operational agreements, so you can do research and development, as I mentioned. Paytm, I think Sean is gonna speak to, about it. They uh, do a lot in terms of, uh, you know, Paytm is known in India, but here in Canada, they came here and developed a completely new development center and it's purely focused on developing new IP and developing products for even for the Canadian and the North American market. So you could do that. You could do into uh, companies like high tech gears, uh, for example, are doing manufacturing here. So that's another model and that could be through joint ventures or, uh, or mergers and acquisition, or you can set up your own greenfield investment. There's uh, near shoring, as I mentioned, or we brought in Infosys and uh, Tech Mahindra. Those kind of operation, even smaller companies here are coming here, you know, startups are coming here and trying to do that. And uh, you can do clinical trials here. That's a huge opportunity. And uh, there are opportunities also to tap into say, uh, manufacturing, serving the manufacturing companies. and. You could actually register companies either as a sole proprietorship or a partnership or uh, a corporation. Corporation is what's normally preferred because of your risk exposure. And we offer the whole suite of uh, economics to service providers who can help make sure you're making the right uh, business structure. And once you're based here, there is a whole range of uh, federal, provincial, municipal, and nonprofit organizations that are here to help companies scale up and sell into the US and beyond. So I hope that answers uh, your questions. I'm happy to answer anything else you have. No, wonderful. I mean, very, very clear. And uh, I, I'd asked a small question, but I got a very diverse answer in the sense that it's not sector specific. A, there are so many advantages uh, that a startup or a incoming entrepreneur could avail of uh, by being in uh, Canada. And so that it really doesn't matter uh, which industry you come from, whether you're AI or your manufacturing or your paper or your uh, agri-tech really doesn't matter. And, uh, and then the host of facilitation available. So thank you so much, uh, Roshan, uh, for that uh, lovely insight. Uh, we'd like to move to Sean Mui Thomas. Uh, now, Sean is uh, he's an economist. He's driving the economic growth of the greater Toronto area. And uh, uh, I'd like to ask you, Sean, uh, which are the really good uh, poster boy kind of uh, startups that you've had in that area? Uh, and 
and what are the main reasons why international tech startups are choosing the Toronto area to build their global area, uh, global uh, companies? Sean? Appreciate the question, Anupam, and I also appreciate being on this panel with, uh, and, and also the thoughtful answers that my co-panelists shared earlier. Uh, good evening, everyone in, in India. Um, my name is Sean Tumers. I just want to give you a little bit of background as far as what, what I do with Toronto Global and what Toronto Global is. Um, I am one half of the uh, the India, India file at Toronto Global, and we're a government-funded not-for-profit that helps uh, international companies uh, be successful in launching operations in the Toronto region. And uh, to answer your question specifically, Anupam, I want to sort of start big and, and go a little bit narrower and say that about 40% of companies are headquartered in uh, that have a headquarters in Canada. Sorry, their headquarter is in the Toronto region or so. So most, most companies are going to have a presence in the Toronto region. I say most large Indian business houses, Swash and Gromit, you know, they operate in Canada with specific operations littered across the Toronto region. Um, as Roshan was mentioning, Wipro does a lot of work here in Canada and they do a lot of work actually with the Toronto Pearson uh, Airport, which incidentally is located in the city of Mississauga. Uh, you know, we've also found that there's a lot of Indian pharmaceutical companies that are operating here. Um, they've entered York region through acquisitions and we've also uh, helped a lot of different tech companies land in the, uh, in the region. Um, including Servify in Durham region. Um, I'd also tell the audience to sort of keep an eye out on the amount of work that's being done surrounding EVs here. Um, Ford, GM, Fiat Chrysler, they're all slated to build EVs uh, in the province and with universities like University of Toronto performing so much research around battery technology um, and tier one auto parts manufacturers um, like Magna, who's investing heavily in AI level five automation. Uh, we have a tremendously diverse and innovative ecosystem here. I'd say that, you know, at the backbone, a lot of companies choose to establish operations here because of the uh, talent. It's a massive draw. I'd say Instacart, uh, Coursera, Cerebris, uh, Etsy, you know. These are all companies that really uh, are growing quite quickly as far as their talent footprint here. But I'd like to talk, as Roshan alluded to, about an example that's a lot closer to home, uh, Paytm. I think the story for Paytm and, and Toronto and Canada really started in about 2011 or so once uh, Paytm was launching their consumer business. Uh, Harinder, who ended up being the, uh, the CEO for Paytm Canada, he, he had many stops across the world, you know, in Finland, Britain, uh, Singapore, France, before he ended up settling in Canada. And, you know, when he came over and he attended different meetups, as, uh, as some of the panelists have been mentioning, we have great community here. Um, he really identified and saw that he could build a great team here. There was great talent at the, the universities. It, the team really just started out with a handful of people and he was going from sort of public library to public library to, uh, to build out some initial uh, traction and products. And uh, I think that's really an exceptional thing that he could have been doing here. In, in 2014, um, Paytm Labs was opened and uh, it opened here in Toronto and it's in charge of all R&D operations for the company. Uh, you know, they're leveraging big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning um, to, to develop these new products. Um, and the company has also stationed their cybersecurity head here in Toronto. Um, I thought something that was really cool um, that I found online and, and really anyone can find it on, on YouTube is, uh, is a talk that Harinder did in 2017 at uh, TechTO meetup um, where he stated that they actually pay more for talent in Bangalore than in Toronto. And it's actually comparable to what they were paying in Delhi. Um, where do we stand now? I encourage you to reach out to us and, uh, and see for yourself. Um, we have a lot of great insights to uh, how you can stack up and build a business case for doing operations here. You know, another um, cool story I think to, to share, and it's not a non-Canadian company, but it's, it's, it's really our current poster child for um, homegrown success is, is a company like Wattpad. They're a global multi-platform, multi-language entertainment company. They were just sold for $600 million to South Korean company Naver. Um, they've actually stated that India is their top market for growth right now. And the person who's heading up their Indian operations is actually a University of Waterloo graduate. Uh, so I think that it's, it sort of brings it full circle to think about the fact that you can come to Canada to build a very global company, or you also have a lot of people from Canada who are going abroad to help build global companies. Um, 
it, it, it's really tremendous when you have that. Um, last thing, last company that I really want to talk about is it's a company I hold dear to my heart. Uh, they're called Intel HR, and they're an Australian tech company, um, HR tech company. Um, I want to highlight them because of the attitude that they bring, uh, which I think is very, very important when you are expanding. You have to have the right attitude. You have to have a great plan. Um, you know, I encourage all of you when you are thinking about expanding abroad to look at the ways that you can join the existing ecosystem and partner with as many stakeholders and competitors as possible. You know, turn competitors into partners. They would not say no to a meeting um, and through the pandemic and inability to actually travel here and establish any of their, you know, their core team as boots on the ground. They've still established research projects with the world's largest urban innovation hub, Mars. And they've created one of the industry leading um, uh, performance summits uh, happening next month with local companies and also the Toronto Raptors VP of basketball operations and player development, Teresa Rex, as a keynote. Um, so there's a lot of traction that you can build from abroad uh, if you bring the right mindset. So overall, I want to say that we have a great ecosystem here. And um, I want to remind you that the ecosystem really is a community, something that Kayla brought up from uh, Startup Canada. And uh, we, there's so many pop opportunities for partnerships to learn and, and to go global. Thanks a lot, Sean. Thanks. Uh, really, um, again, inspiring uh, to learn about how people came and succeeded, not only from India, but Australia and so many other countries. And again, the underscoring of the fact that Roshan made and Jasleen made that uh, it's not about the sector, the space, the industry. It's about uh, the mindset you bring. It's about the, the innovative thoughts that you have, uh, which will find resonance. You will be able to find a team. You will be able to find support. Now, there's another interesting thing that you brought up, Sean, which is rather cl close to my heart. Uh, and I guess uh, quite a few members of the audience might find uh, it resonates with them. And that is that India itself is a very large market and it's a very vibrant startup ecosystem. So we've got a lot of talent here. We've got a lot of uh, people who do startups, who are available to work with startups. Um, so what are your thoughts on uh, this version of the collaboration also of how uh, Canadian based startups explore India as a market? And India's got a talent for cost destruction, which is very different from cost reduction. There's nothing incre incremental about this. I mean, you you really destroy costs. Uh, and once you do that, uh, you've got a very interesting, very dynamic market opening up, uh, which takes people by surprise oftentimes. So you, you see some, uh, uh, some chemistry, some traction there. And feel free, whoever feels uh, uh, they'd like to go first. I have one practical case that I would like to, to share with you I have about different ways of collaborating because the classic one is, yes, you want to set up a company here in Canada and then you will have this massive support as the one that Sean and Ocean has offered. But I'm, there are many interesting ways that we can also think about it. So for example, uh, recently we discussed this case about one startup in Canada in, fin in the fintech sector with another similar startup in India in fintech. Uh, in Canada, the problem of this startup was that the market was not large enough. Whereas the complex of expanding to a market like India, it's, it's high. So how about partnering with another startup in India where you can expand and reach out a much larger market by partnering with this startup? On the other side, the problem of the startup in India was that they have they needed to expand their portfolio of solutions, and by partnering with someone who had a more advanced one, which was the case of this startup in Canada. So it was very much combining um, the and com a complementary discussion about two startups um, building on their resources on their strengths but also uh, achieving their strategic goals. So I think this is also one type of partnership that can be very useful when we are talking about a different ecosystems. And it goes beyond the community, but it really goes effectively into the market and, and 
the other uh, uh, quite uh, recent example is we are now discussing this coalition with different startups and it has been pushed by our colleagues in Toronto, by Communitech, how our startups we can scout talents worldwide. So bring in this talent so you can come as a startup yourself, but you can come as Shansat to join the startups and help us build in successful case, uh, in global successful case. So this is also another one extra tool that is, uh, is being put by our ecosystem to integrate uh, international companies like the like our Indian colleagues that would like to join uh, in Canada. And this really recognize that not only established corporations, but startups are also the engine, the economic engine of, of our country mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. Very, very interesting also to find out how that chemistry between the two fintech companies would have happened. Because uh, at iCreate, very briefly, we've got a landing pad program, which, which kind of offers this very safe uh, space where incoming uh, startups from across the world uh, and we work with Israeli and Australian and US ones uh, and, and they have a uh, safe uh, landing pad place and they meet co-promoters, they meet uh, interested like-minded people who share the journey. But uh, Sean, Roshan, you have uh, something to add to what Jisleen said? Sure, sure. So. Um this is something very important and close to our heart here in Canada. So the Canadian government has actually signed agreements with the Indian government to develop, help companies do joint work for technology adaptation, validation and co-development. So it's a program called the Canada International Innovation Program where uh, the Canadian government and the Indian government will support uh, projects, uh, R&D projects and commercialization projects where you bring in the Canadian uh, SME and uh, institution and a, a Indian uh, SME and an institution to do this kind of efforts and the company this uh, entity can qualify for up to 50 percent of eligible costs to a maximum of six hundred thousand dollars and it can cover fax uh, salary contractor fees some reasonable travel costs and so forth so that's one way you know we can use those kind of platforms to promote collaboration yeah, I'll, I'll sort of throw in an answer. Part of me um, for interrupting there. I, I just want to throw in sort of an answer that's in parallel to a lot of the, the comments that were, were uh, mentioned and also the question. And that's sort of surrounding our, our, our universities. They're, they're absolutely world class. And I know that a lot of them, uh, University of Toronto, Schulich, um, building out great partnerships with um, with physical presence boots on the ground in India. Um, you know, just recently, uh, Shulik School of Business, uh, in partnership with Startup India, just ran a one-week hackathon to start off 2021 called Together 2021. Um, we have so many international students, and um, India is very well represented here with that. I think that that helps a, a really good long-term um, basis of, of how you create more businesses um, between the two countries is having that legacy of, of, of education um, as well. And I think that, you know, doing research partnerships with universities as well allows companies to sort of dip their toe into um, the ecosystem on one way or the other. And I, I know that the corporate relationship with universities here has been um, uh, sort of described as uh, hand in glove. They work very, very well together. Um, so I think that's a really unique opportunity that companies have to um, submit sort of a use case um, problem statement that they have and, and see how things can be ameliorated and, and per perhaps solutioned around a, um, a research partnership and small operation um, in Canada. If I wasn't a dinosaur from before the ice age, I would be rushing to Canada right now. I mean, this is exciting stuff that you folks have been. <laughs> and uh, I promise uh, I'll be reaching out to all of you because uh, because this is something that uh, India is very keen on. I create is very very keen on. And Did we lose anybody? The facilitation and empowerment which is available. Thank you so much, uh, Sean, Jesley, Roshan. Delightful being there with you. Um, thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, Gaurav, Metali. 
over to you. Thank you. So after four good roadshows, uh, we come to the last, but I think the most important part of the, the, the roadshow, uh, information about Startup Rich Canada 2021. So what is it all about? Startup Rich Canada is a six week pre-market entry startup program, allowing up to 50 high potential growth stage India headquartered startups to access and understand Canada and build out their North American strategy. We are seeking to select B2B software, enterprise tech, deep tech startups that are well geared for an international expansion and looking to set up a base in North America. Startup Bridge Canada is a mentorship driven program comprising virtual workshops, keynote sessions and access to a network of accelerators, founders, investors, corporates, universities and economic development agencies. Over the duration of six weeks, selected startups will be engaged in eight to 12 hours of cumulative interactions per week, thereby totaling in excess of 50 hours of live programming in addition to other resources. We have onboarded over 40 local mentors from Canada, including successful entrepreneurs, investors, heads of uh, startup programs, former diplomats and industry experts. To add to that, we have 15 local partners that will ably support the cohort. Our website, www.startupbridge.in, I repeat, www.startupbridge.in is informative. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to my colleague Gaurav or myself. For those in attendance, we strongly urge you to, uh, uh, you know, we, we strongly urge you to, to uh, go ahead and apply for this program if you already haven't. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to take them. But before we close this session, I'd like to acknowledge our regional partners who have supported us in promoting this program to startups in Western India. A big thank you to iCreate, to College of Engineering, Pune's Pau Institute, FIRE, 100XVC, Research Innovation Incubation Design Labs, Indian Angel Networks, Indo-Canadian Business Chamber. Thank you very much, people, and look forward to your continued support for the next.